What's up everybody? I've got a, a Mora here that I'm going to sharpen and I have an Ancient Ocean Jasper whetstone here and what I've done is I've left the surface of this stone prepared at about 120 grit. Now the way that's done is by lapping the stone with silicon carbide that is 120 grit and it leaves a surface that feels very sticky to the finger, very textured, very rough. Um, it's a very interesting sharpening sensation that you get because the stone is very hard, so it starts to absorb metal. So you can guarantee that at the beginning of the sharpening session, the stone is gonna work faster. So if you can see this spot on my knife here, there's a little chip right there. I'm gonna see if I can work it out, even though I'm using a very fine stone. And I'm gonna pretend like I'm a Viking and that this is the only sharpening stone I have with me. And I know how to use it very well, so I should be able to use just this one tool for the job. So, let's see how long it takes. And as you guys can see, if I tip the stone, I get a line of steel every sharpening stroke. The property of this stone to be able to take on different grit surface preparations is probably one of the most outstanding characteristics of this stone. I think that if you have some sandpaper or loose grinding powder, you can pretty much use just this stone. You don't need to own any other stones. And again, I'm gonna show you the surface. Lots more steel, and if we look at the tip out here, some improvement for sure. So with keeping that proper bevel angle in mind, I'm just counting my strokes, and I try to do about the same on every side. And I'm also trying to use as much of this stone as I can because the more that I fill it with steel, the slower it starts to cut. So if I was out in the woods and I have totally loaded my stone up with metal, I would find another softer material like a piece of sandstone and rub it on the stone until the pores are open again. Very nice cutting sound. And I'm doing some on the lower parts of the Scandi grind as well, just to make sure that I don't get too far ahead with uh, one part of the edge versus another. tip that time so I'm gonna come back and get it two three and now one two three one two three just like that continuing keeping my strokes as even as I can Now it's important to understand that this surface preparation is done with loose grit because it doesn't gouge into the stone. So if I take something like a coarse diamond plate 
I'm going to get more scratches on the surface of the stone. So when you are doing a rougher grit surface preparation on your Jasper stones, you just want to keep in mind that the goal is not to tear the surface of the stone up, but just open up the pores, make the pores of the stone free of metal again. So I find that a uh, fine diamond plate is actually really nice because as I'm sharpening, the stone is not dishing. That is why it loads up with metal. The pores are open enough that they eat steel and I'm not cutting into the stone. The stone is cutting steel. And this happens with every single steel I've tried with these stones. And even extremely hard to hone knives in super steel seem to sharpen no problem with these Jasper stones. Especially if the surface is not totally loaded up. And once I get that chip out, I will flip my knife over, or sorry, I will flip the stone over and use the finer side just to get a little better of a finish. I'm gonna use a little more pressure and doing about 10 back and forth. You can really see how much this stone is cutting. This stone cuts better than any synthetic sharpening stones that I've tried for hardness performance with uh, the ability to keep cutting. So even though the stone slows down when it's totally loaded up with metal, the pores and the, the hard grit of the stone are still, still going to give you a pretty good polishing action. Now, if I show you the other side in a minute of this stone, you'll see that it's smoother and I can, I can dry the stone off as well to kind of show you this point. This uh, coarse side is a lot less reflective. You can see it's more of a um, semi-finished kind of a polish. Now if I dry off this side that I have been using for straight razor polishing and keeping finer grit, you'll see this side is a lot smoother looking. I'm trying to get rid of any hairs from my shirt. This side I have burnished to a much more glassy state, whereas this side it's eaten a lot of metal but the pores are, are rougher, they're more open. So after a couple of sharpening sessions, if you wanna speed up the side that you're using to eat more metal, you can just use some loose grit silicon carbide, or also you could use sandpaper, and you just don't want to push too hard with a uh, really coarse diamond stone, because you'll put too big of scratches so I recommend around 120 or, or 200 grit sandpaper. Another trick is circles, just keeping my wrist and my elbow very consistent. Very nice, fast cutting action. I love that raspy sound, sound and uh, you can really see where you are on the stone if you keep close track of the metal. You can see which streak you just left and that, that shows you where you are on your edge. And we've almost worked that chip out. And the really nice benefit of using such a hard stone to do it is that I keep my edge geometry really nice whereas if i use a a coarse stone that is made of ceramic the stone is going to dish out at the same time that i'm sharpening so that's a big disadvantage to using a hard natural stone like this jasper i think that mankind has lost a lot of the knowledge about 
which tools really do the right job. And I think that simplicity is a really good mindset because it's easy to spend $500 on a large set of synthetic sharpening stones. Oh, you get every different rated grit progression. But at the end of the day, all you really need to do is rub the steel on the rock until the edge is sharp. <laughs> so do you have to spend $500 for a 1,000, a 2,000, a 3,000, a 5,000, 10,000, 16,000, 30,000 grit stones? No, absolutely not. This stone finishes it easily 30,000 grit when you use it for a very fine polishing. And as you can see, with a bit of texture management and surface control, this chip is almost totally gone. Looks like we're at about the 11 minute mark. So that's not bad at all. It's definitely reduced. I'm gonna finish it out. It might take a bit longer. If you are still watching, thank you so much for really seeing this raw, unedited, personable demonstration. I try not to edit this video because I really want you to see that in real time, I can get some very nice reprofiling work done using just one stone. I occasionally wash the stone off like that because it helps keep stray particles away that might have gotten onto the stone from my hands or from the countertop. And also it helps wash away any chunks of steel that I might have taken off of the edge during the reprofile process. Sometimes you'll knock off a foil or a burr, and so it's good to occasionally, occasionally rinse, keep that stone free of hairs and floating grit. And I like to switch hands a lot when I do one side of a Scandi grind and then the other, just because it makes it nice and easy to feel that I'm staying flat. It's getting sharp. I can only see just a little bit of that chip left. I'm focusing on the tip more now. It's always takes a little longer for me to sharpen the curved part of this style of a knife. And it's good to go slow and slowly adjust the angle. Ride the edge as you go. You wanna feel the nice contact between the side of your bevel. It should plow the water forward. Obviously you don't want to lift up too much or you'll take your edge into the stone. So just going by my thumbnail, light, light pressure. I can feel which parts of the edge are the sharpest and where up here, up here seems sharpest. Down here, not quite as sharp. The factory grind of this knife comes in just a little bit, a little bit of a belly. So as you push into this part of the knife edge, the first few sharpening sessions with a flat stone, then the, the Mora knife starts to take a little bit of a better profile.
Now it's hard to say exactly what kind of grit finish a coarsely prepared hard and fine stone gives, but I would say that this is pretty comparable to a 1000 grit stone. Maybe a little bit slower after 10 or 15 minutes of sharpening, but still feels very engaging every stroke. And even though the stone is loading up with quite a lot of steel, it's still very grabby. It feels like it's really uh, still very nice performance. is getting nice and sharp. I can feel the good traction and draw. And I really feel the stone marrying nicely to the edge. You can feel a partnership between the two when your edge is almost sharp. And a real big difference when it's about as sharp as it's going to get because there's a lot of stiction, your knife edge is very fine so it's like you're shaving the top of the stone except the stone is finally shaping the geometry of your steel very very nice fine edge and a very robust edge for this knife And the great thing about the fact that this stone does not gouge is that you don't create ripples or texture changes or low spots when you're actually really working the stone and pushing with a knife because the stone is still superior to this hard steel. And uh, even if you try to go point in, you won't actually be able to gouge one of these stones. They're just, they're too hard. You'll roll your knife edge very quickly, which can be frustrating if you're a beginner. Uh, softer sharpening stones, if you screw up the angle, they're more forgiving because they don't resist your steel as well. But in the long run, I think that's a disadvantage because you then have to flatten the stone. Whereas this stone, it's not dishing out, it's just the surface gets loaded up. So when you go to flatten it, you're really not changing much in the way of flatness, you're actually just reopening the surface. So checking in again, you can see just a little bit of that chip left. I would be ready to go to, off into the wilderness with this knife as it is right now, because that chip is so small and I brought the rest of the sharpness back to this edge beautifully. You can see it's definitely getting shinier there's a uh, very nice straight line effect from the factory grind. And then when you tip this way, you can see more of the mirror type of polish that this natural stone is putting on it. All right, I said I would get this task done. One video, no edits, one stone. So let me get this chip out the rest of the way and focus in on that.
an interesting point to make is that although I seem to have covered the whole surface of this stone at least a few times, the steel pattern is still happening in new directions. So you can see all the circles I just did, whereas at the beginning I was doing very linear strokes. And I would say that the cutting action of the stone is still quite efficient. The pores are still open. That's pretty great for about 25 minutes of continuous sharpening with pressure. And I'm not going to actually lap the stone again mid-session because I just want to make the point that it really it doesn't need it if you're already prepared when you go out with this rock. Say you take it with you camping, you probably wouldn't need to lap it for a good camping trip. And uh, like I said, if you really don't have any other tools with you but you had this stone, you could probably find a piece of sandstone or some other rock and rub it on the surface of this stone and that would help with opening up the pores again. All right, let's see how we're doing. That's definitely an improvement. The knife didn't seem to want to cut paper when I was first feeling it out before I started the video. That's, that's decent. There's still definitely resistance in that cutting action. But that chip is almost totally gone. So we'll go a little more and a little more carefully. And we'll get that edge nice and sharp, nice and smooth. I think it's important to just do one stroke on each side at a time after you get your basic bevel set. Sometimes I do a lot more strokes near a problem area of the edge, like the tip, for example, where I was fixing that chip. And then at the end, I try to get everything planed in nice and smooth. One stroke across the whole edge.
lighter pressure for sure as you're getting closer. Now, the way that the stone is loaded up, I can definitely feel a difference in the cutting speed. And it's starting to be more of like a, a medium speed as opposed to how fast it felt when I first started with the surface freshly lapped at about 120 grit. This transition zone on the Scandi grind is always a little bit tricky to sharpen for me. Probably because I switched up doing it with one hand versus doing it the other. Consistency is the key when you freehand sharpen, and having a, a really coarse cutting stone is a more forgiving way to sharpen than if you're trying to use a very slow, fine side of a stone like this. Because if I do lose the sharpness of the edge, I can reclaim that angle pretty quickly by just making sure that my technique is good and that I have the knife in contact exactly how I want it. Okay, that feels pretty good on the coarse side of that stone. This side is lapped smoother already, so I'll just flip over. And that did most of the whole sharpening job just on that side with the specialty lapping. And this side feels like silk in comparison. The cutting action is much slower. And this is good because then I can really engage the stone in a smooth and fine way. I don't need to remove very much steel at all at this point. I'm just putting on the light final touches. And I still see lines of steel up here, and that tends to be something that's going to decrease the more and more you let one side load up and you just keep the other side surface refreshed now and then. So the more that this fine side gets used, the finer and finer that it really starts to get. Alrighty, that feels very sharp to the touch. Let's see about a little paper slice. Now, obviously this is a pretty thick grind. It's not meant to be super slicey, but that is pretty great for being very dull at the beginning. So anyway, thanks for checking out that real live time sharpening demonstration. If you guys would like to learn more about how I make these stones, feel free to check out the Facebook group, Wild Wet Stones. And if you'd like to check out where these stones are available for purchase, check out naturalwetstonesharpening.com and pick yourself up an ancient ocean jasper if you're looking for a all-in-one lifetime lasting stone. And again, if you guys made it to the end of this video, I really hope this helps you. If there's anything I can do to speed up your journey as a sharpener, please let me know. And... Thanks for watching. Peace.